let's start with Linkpad. How did that project start? That started um, 10 years ago. Um, I had an idea that it would be cool if, uh, this is when Link just came out, it would be cool if you could uh, just type a, a Link expression query um, into an editor and, and uh, it would run it against a database in real time like SQL. Um, so I, I wrote that product and uh, released it in uh, th about three months. Um, and that became um, quite popular. And, but what I found is that um, people weren't just using it for that. They were also using it uh, as a scratch pad for, for C Sharp. Um, and so I continued developing the product to um, uh, make it more ergonomic as a scratch pad and added support for VB and F Sharp. Um, and it's now become a, quite a popular uh, .NET utility where it's a, it's a very, uh, you know, it's a 20 megabyte download and it's very ergonomic and conducive for running um, um, scripts in C Sharp for automation, for testing, for learning and uh, referencing uh, libraries, testing libraries, test, uh, experimenting with NuGet libraries and so on. So you've got a couple of talks at NDC this time. Um, I've just seen you do a great one, which was um, talking about the software lifestyle, lifestyle business. Um, what can you tell us about that? Well, this is uh, what happened to Linkpad. So um, as, as it became more successful, I added uh, premium features, uh, auto-completion, so um, people can pay um, extra to use those features. Uh, and that brought in enough income that I was able to quit the job. And then since ever since then, it's been um, uh, providing a good income. So. It's effectively, um, it's very different to the, uh, the startup kind of business where you look for exponential sales um, and a high stress uh, kind of life and that will eventually hopefully result in an IPO. Mm -hmm. This is very software lifestyle business is very much around uh, creating something that's enjoyable and that's compatible with other interests. Um, and it gives you a lot of freedom, freedom in hours, it replaces your income and it's, um, it's very rewarding and um, uh, what way to, to run your life. So how do you go about marketing something like Linkpad? Um, with marketing, um, what I found was very important is, and, and this is something f for me that happens somewhat naturally because I'm already involved in that community, which is the, the C Sharp community and the Link community. Getting involved in that community into which you're selling and making the right connections so that the right people will find out about your product. They often do the marketing for you. Some people at Microsoft were, were um, uh, very uh, important in that and that they demoed it internally at Microsoft and, and so it became uh, used within there and used um, in, in many other places. So um, that meant that that gives the marketing is far easier um, and it's a question then of things like uh, you know, advertising and uh, uh, you know, giving promotional licenses away and things like that for instance for marketing. And it's, uh, certainly uh, it's, I would say the most important thing is, is getting uh, involved in that community into which you're selling. So your talk was full of great advice, and one thing you touched on a lot was something called confirmation bias. So as a single person developer, mm. a single person product, how do you manage the confirmation bias in just one person? How, sure. what, what are your techniques? There's, there's a couple of ways you can do that. It's a good question. Um, one is if you've got somebody else who's involved in a similar kind of business to, um, and you talk to regularly. So um, you can talk about um, your, your ideas with them, and they can give you honest feedback. And it's a quid pro quo if you've got if you're, you're both involved in in our business. That's one way. It's very effective to have someone you can talk to like that. And also, um, everything you do, I think it's important to try and get very quick for early feedback. Mm. So you don't want to go down the point of investing heavily before you get some feedback. That's another important uh, another important technique. So you can cut your losses if you do make a suboptimal decision. So your talk was full of great advice. Um, which piece of advice you gave is the one that you yourself struggle with most to actually follow your own, your own advice? I would say um, spending enough time on marketing. Yeah. Because as a tech guy, I just want to program. I want to write yeah. new features. And so that's the hardest thing is putting aside time for marketing. So um, what's new in Linkpad? Any, any new features coming up that excite you? Um, well, the biggest uh, recent new feature of it, mm. some few months ago now, but was um, support for, for C Sharp 7 and VB 15. Yeah, okay. So that's obviously it's important. It supports the latest version and mm. it means it's, um, you know, it's, it's great because people might want to start playing with it and they haven't, they don't want to necessarily download the huge tool set. So the, uh, it's only a, a 15 megabytes and they're playing with it. Um, the other is, uh, in terms of what's coming up, um, I'm looking at uh, how we're going to, how it's going to work with, um, with .NET um, Core. Mm. Uh, the, at the moment, it's, uh, that the plan is, which is something that's fairly simple to, to, uh, to do, is to get uh, support for, for .NET Standard 2. Yep. Um, so that's really just a bit of plumbing required to make mm. that work. Um, but it would also be something I'm considering as to improving the uh, .NET 
uh, call support so that it can access uh, functions that are only available to .NET Core. Yeah. And that means the queries actually have to run in a different, mm. uh, d uh, completely different host. So, um, and that's something I'm looking at. With that, there's no currently any good, good path for you to actually make a fully cross-platform link pad because that needs the UI to run on yes, so .NET Core. Yes, the, the, so the other half of .NET Core yeah. is writing link pad itself yes. in .NET Core, right, yeah. which would made, uh, open up a path to cross-platform. Yeah. And at the moment, um, as you're right, the, the, mm. the user interface uh, is the, that's the hard thing. And I, I do have a feeling that um, I'd be surprised that if in a year's time we don't have something filling that space. It's a, it's, a, it's a really big space. It's just wide open waiting to be filled. That's right. And so for my final question, and this is kind of more of a fun question, if you um, mm. had a time machine and could go back, say, a year or two years and give you one piece of work-related advice, what would you tell your past self? Um, and I guess the last uh, few years, I've, I have mostly learned from the mistakes earlier, so there's mm. been nothing too big. But one thing um, I, I could certainly say is that um, it was only relatively in the last one or two years that I really decided to properly learn how Git works. So before then, I was a cargo cult Git programmer, and that just caused me a world of pain. So just putting that time aside and learning it, um, it, it that certainly improves the quality of life if, you, if it's a thing, something you're using every day. Yeah, great advice. Okay, well, thank you very much, Joel Bahari. This has been SSW TV at NDC Sydney.